Yeah, this is Steve Light from Leading Light TV, and I've got a special guest with me today, Jeff Panzarella, and we're going to be talking about, you know, shyness and, you know, living your dreams, fulfilling your your passion, uh, because a lot of shy people, you know, have these things that they want to be and achieve, but, you know, the shyness holds you back. So, yeah, thanks for coming today, Jeff. How are you doing, mate? Uh, I'm doing very well, thank you, Steve. Pleasure to meet you. And you. So, what we do, we get straight into it. And the first question I wanted to ask you was, uh, you know, you said in a recent article that you were painfully shy as a child. So, how how did that affect you in your life? Oh wow. Um, I mean, how how didn't it affect me? <laughs> I think. Uh, you know, I. I I try to put my finger on even where or why shyness happens, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, product of your environment and, you know, how you were raised as a child or something genetic or, you know, I don't quite know, um, where it came from. I feel like it might, it might be, uh, you know, for me personally, it might have come from just kind of, kind of being picked on and bullied and always being around older kids as a, as a younger kid and, and, yeah. and feeling inferior. And then in turn being around my own age kids and, uh, feeling inferior or, or stupid or among them. And, um, you know, I, I definitely think, you know, teasing and bullying goes into it. And, you know, it kind of, it, it's, it's, it's a really weird situation because I was always an athletic kid, um, up until, you know, I played, uh, sports and, in, in through college. Yeah. And, you know, in high school and, and in middle school, you know, I, I was a popular kid. I was an athletic kid. I played sports. And to this day, I mean, still growing up and even through popularity and through sports and kind of being that person that maybe people looked up to. And I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, blow smoke <laughs> by any means, but I still never felt like I fed in. You know, I, yeah. I look back to high school where I was, you know, um, you know, a great athlete in a, in, in a popular clique, quote unquote. But at the same time, I was kind of like a closet artist. And, and you know, I never, even though I was part of that clique, I never felt really like I was a part of it. You know, I still felt kind of like I never fit in or I was kind of an outsider looking in and, and it had to do with, you know, with, with, with shyness and, and, um, and, uh, you know, just part of it was not feeling comfortable, um, in my surroundings, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, it led to me kind of, kind of turning inward and, and, and doing things creative, um, and kind of realizing that I was creative at the same time. But, um, yeah, it, it just led to a lot of, uh, you know, time by myself, so to speak. And, and I don't want to make it seem like I sat in my room <laughs> for, for 15 years, you know, growing up as a kid. But like I said, I just, you know, I was a popular kid. I wasn't always nece you know necessarily comfortable with the popularity because at the same time it drew a lot of attention and I wasn't always comfortable with that yeah um, and uh, you know it kind of it just put me in this weird place where I, I never felt kind of accepted you know because yeah. I was an athletic popular kid and that's great and at the, you know and then I would try to make friends with the you know the you know your uh, musicians and your artists in school in a totally different uh, clique and a whole different uh, you know uh, group of friends and I was kind of never you know welcomed there because well I was a jock and and you yeah. know, it was like either one or the other there was never this this kind of uh, you know melting pot of of just everybody and it was just mm -hmm. you know one way or the other and you know, like I said, it affects you and you don't realize, you know, it, 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 it stays with you and you take it with you kind of, you know, throughout your whole life. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. You say that because yeah. shyness has an idea of, you know, the stereotypical kind of kid who keeps himself to himself and doesn't have many friends, but it's really exactly. interesting that you've explained it from the other side. Um, because, you know, when things are really bad for me, I, I still had times when, I wanted to be center of attention and I could, you know, show off to people. Exactly. But, exactly. And you can't. Very, very weird. And, you know, I looked at other people and I always thought that everyone else was more confident than I was and comparing myself to other people. So I know yeah. it's kind of not being comfortable in your own skin, even though you had all this out of popularity and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. It goes to show that you never know 
what someone's feeling inside. You can't really judge exactly what yeah. the person. I mean, I've come, I've come to a point now too where, like you said, I mean, and as an artist, and you know, I'm a photographer as well. Um, you know, c- comparing yourself. Um, to other people who do the same type of artwork is, you know, probably one of the most detrimental things you can do, I think, as an artist. You know, number one, it, you know, you feel like you have to do what they do or create like they create and, and, and it doesn't let you kind of figure out your own style. And, um, I, I think, you know, that constant comparison to, well, why can't I look like his or why can't I create as, as good as this person? And, and it kind of just keeps, you know, you're beating yourself down, you know, indirectly and you don't even realize it and, and it causes you know you know you to just uh you know get down on yourself and 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 not even make the first step to to go create you know you feel like well why should i even bother i'll never be like this person or i can never you know do work like you know her or uh, yeah you know it's just it, it's a vicious cycle it really is if you let if you let yourself fall into that trap it is a vicious cycle and you know i come you know i tell my wife this all the time um you know and it, i you got to kind of beat into my own head. It's, you, you never know what happens behind closed doors. You never know, uh, you know, what's happening on people's end too. And it's funny because, you know, the, and I'm sure you see this is it, the more you reach out and, and you're meeting new people, you find out maybe people have the, uh, a lot of the same thoughts that, you know, that we do, yeah. um, without even realizing it. And maybe they have, you know, social anxiety or, or, or fear or we're shy or even now, I mean, people, every, you know, everyone's insecure. Everyone has their fear or, you know, or doubts themselves in, in, in uh in certain ways so i don't think it's uncommon i just think it's maybe a little more uncommon for people to be vocal about it so yeah that's that's definitely right and this in society we like giving labels so absolutely it's everyone's different and we've all got different insecurities and you know the way i see it now i don't judge anyone because you know people act in certain ways you can't really judge you know, you don't know what they've gone through or whatever, it's just... Yes. And I found that when things were hard for me, I kind of... I hated outwardly confident people um, because... I don't know, I just didn't... They just... I just felt threatened by them. Um, mm-hmm. But now I've see, I've met people who seem outwardly confident and they're... You know, they just talk a lot because they don't like awkward silences. And they just, it's that nervous energy. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. So moving on from that, when did when did things start to change and you started feeling more comfortable and confident in your own skin? And uh, did did acting help with that? <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, it. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, like you said, I was. I was, sometimes you, you, you kind of, you wanted to be the center of attention because you felt like if you were the center of attention and you had people looking at you and you were engaged, you would almost forget of your, uh, you know, your shyness or your fear. And it was kind of, you know, you almost let the other people do the work for you. They turned their yeah. attention towards you and in turn, you, you didn't have to work because it was, the attention was, was there and, and, and you didn't feel like you had to make the step yourself. Um, you know, I, I want to say, you know, through my freshman year in college, I, I still was, uh, I want to say mid-college, you know, probably when I was, you know, 20 years old, I, I maybe started to break out a little bit, but it, it wasn't really until, you know, the end of college, I, I really, you know, like I said, I had this love for film and photography my, my entire life, and mm. and finally, you know, you know, my mid, or early 20s, mid-20s, I was like, you know, why am I not doing this you know why do i love this so much i'm not doing this and and i started to really concentrate on making my own films and and even in that i was always the director writer person putting it together i was always behind the camera um and i was so afraid and petrified to be in front of it whether you know to because i felt stupid or i you know i felt like i would have people judge me or tell me i was bad and you know you you look for it's it's so weird because you you look for other people to validate you. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, I mean, think about, think about your social media, your, you know, people, people post pictures and what do they do? They keep checking Facebook. How many people are liking it? How many people are commenting it? Yeah. You know, commenting on it. You know, they're, they're looking for other people to say, Hey, you know, give you some type of, uh, justification or, uh, you know, like we said, validation for, you know, and, and it, it's just, it's just weird, you know, kind of, 
place we live in right now. But like I said, it was I was afraid to get in front of the camera to to have other people think I sucked or think yeah. I was or I was stupid or acting was stupid. And um, mm. and it wasn't until even a, you know it was really only a couple years ago, probably for the last four years, where I I got in camera. I, I and the reason. I think it really started to turn around for me was I got in front of the camera for a couple short films and the feeling that I felt when I was in front of it and working, it, it was like a high that I've never felt before. It was, you know, it was a very euphoric feeling where I literally remember thinking to myself, you know, wow, you know, this is, I, I feel I'm in a good place. Um, and that's kind of, and, and you know, and it's funny because I would still, in between films or whatever, I, I would almost start to revert back to my myself, but that thought of having that feeling again, it was a drug, you know, I, I needed to get back, and, and when I was back in front of the camera, I... You know, I was I was there. I was home again. You know, it's it's it's, it's very weird, and I'm sure you understand. But oh, man. Um, it's, uh, it's tough I, to explain. It's, it's a really, really weird thing. Yeah, I totally understand that. I I wanted to do try some kind of acting myself, but I yeah. I face my public speaking fears, and I run a group, and yeah. you know, I lead a group to help people overcome their public speaking fears, and I'm yeah. I feel amazing when I'm like talking in front of the group and everything oh absolutely yeah it's, it's like a feeling that you, you can't get anywhere else it really it really yeah it is it's, it's like you know I, I feel amazing talking in front of the group and then maybe at a break or something I'll, I'll revert to being like a little bit awkward and not know how to talk to people and stuff like that it's really yeah. funny um, and yeah. I guess a lot of actors are like that because I I've heard from friends who have um, been extras in films and stuff. Like, you see these actors and you think they're massively confident, but they they've learnt their lines. They're they're acting. They're not being themselves. Yeah. They, they're performing a role, and they're totally different in real life. So a lot of them are oh, in quiet. It's like it, it was, and and you know, and to kind of add to that, it was acting was almost you know, I wasn't a person who went to their parents and. Um, and said, "Oh, mom or dad, I you know I feel this way or I feel this way. I'm having trouble. I, you know, I, I was the kind of kid that wanted to do, and whether it was a, a, a result of my shyness or not, I wanted to do everything by myself. I wanted to learn by yeah. myself. I didn't want any help. Um, and I kind of, you know, and like you said, when I had a lot of feelings, whether you know whatever they were, growing up through childhood, adolescence, adulthood, uh, I kept them inside. And, and you know, once I started taking acting class and working with a coach." I, Regardless if I ever made a movie or a film or, or anything, and I, and I never succeeded in the film industry, quote unquote, the actual class, I mean, it was like going to therapy. It really was. You know, you have, you don't realize kind of what you suppress over your, your life and, uh, and, you know, being able to use those certain emotions and on stage or, or, or in the class or whatever and, and kind of let them out was, yeah. uh, I mean, I left, I was always exhausted, you know, like you read in that article, I was, I left class feeling just so like, uh, you know, relieved, like there was a weight off my shoulders and there, you know, there was nothing, you know, it's, it's the, the emotional stress I was putting on myself, you know? Yeah. So. And you, yeah, the article I read, you actually in a, an independent film with some quite big names, uh, Clifton Powell. Yes. So how was that for you? That sounds amazing. Were you, were you nervous doing it? Um, yes, I mean, I, I, you know, it's really weird because, you know, I've done a, a lot of short independent stuff with really not any name actors, quote unquote, not, you know, not to say they're not talented by any means, but just not a name. So, you know, Clifton Powell was a, was an actor producer in this film, Keith David, Lynn Whitfield, John Deal, who, you know, excuse me, these are actors who have, you know, they've been working steadily in the industry for 30 years and... I remember at the table read, it was a Friday afternoon and, and or Friday morning to the afternoon. It was about 10 hour day. And I remember sitting there kind of taking it all in like, wow, you know, I was just watching, you know, Ray with Jamie Foxx is one of my favorite movies. And Clifton Powell had a substantial role in that film um, as Jamie Foxx's manager. And um, I remember thinking and listening to him talk and kind of guiding actors through scenes. And, and, you know, he was kind of like that wise father figure during that day. And, I remember thinking, wow, you know, yesterday I was doing, you know, my own stuff with, 
you know, my own camera, my own equipment. All of a sudden today, I'm, I'm sitting in the room with Clifton Powell, and he's <laughs> teaching me. And I'm working, I'm, I'm, I'm working with him. You know, we're on a same project together. You know, and I couldn't. It's very weird to wrap your head around. Um, okay. And even Lynn Whitfield, who you know, same thing. She's been doing this forever, and and I had. A very, you know, my first scene in the movie is a very long scene with her, you know, face to face with her. And, you know, it's weird. It's like, you know, we shot everything so fast and you don't, you almost didn't have the time because of everything going on on set to, to be nervous. It was just, okay, this is Lynn. This is Jeff. We hadn't rehearsed together because she wasn't at the rehearsal. And, you know, really my first time meeting her was our first scene together. And, it, you know, you didn't really have. Like I said, the the time to oh wow this is this is Lynn Woodfield and she's been in this with Julia Roberts and I should be really nervous you know it was kind of after the fact I, I, you know I, the film was screened this past weekend and I, I thought back to myself I was like wow you know that's pretty cool you know um, but yeah you know like I was the, the nerves are there but once you start working with them and you know you see everything on set you know f when you're on a set of a movie you realize how much or how much more really you know it's it's very fake um and you realize that even more when you're there and and you realize too even working with lynn you know she would mess up and she would mess up and you know turn around let's we got to do this again let's talk about it and you realize you know they're, they're just people just like my, you know just like me just like you and you know they might be from any part of the world that you know you've never been to or, or wherever and and they're just people they mess up and and, and that's it. And and I think the fact that I saw that behind the scenes was like, you know, it gave me kind of a boost of confidence. Like, I can do this. Yeah. You know, here's someone who's been doing this 30 years. They mess up. And I'm hanging, you know, I'm hanging, with, holding my own with, with her. And, uh, you know, I felt good. And it was, it, like, it was a huge boost of confidence. It really was. You know. That's so cool. And, and Clifton too. Clif Cl Cl yeah, Clif Clifton was Clifton Powell. You know, I, I don't know. I didn't know much aside, you know, from the movies he's done. And he was on set almost every day. And the, the, you know, I got so much time in between scenes just to sit and pick his brain mm. about everything. I mean, my wife came to set one day, and he was just, you know, as soon as he, he was just so nice to her. And you guys got to get this book about marriage. You'll love it. And, and <laughs> talk to us about life. And I mean, it, it was just like. You know, you expect them to just talk about the movies, and but you know they have families, and you know he has a daughter, and he was on the phone with, and they have the same issues. You know, I overheard a conversation with him, and the same issues that I go through as a parent, because I am a parent. Uh, you know, he goes through just like anybody else, no matter how much money or or how many you know films he's been in. And it was like I said, it was comforting to know that it really you know closed a gap between um, you know. They say, you know, an actor and a non-actor, you know, as, you know, people we put on a pedestal as a celebrity really close that gap for me just to be yeah. like, you know, we're just people. It's, uh, you know, we all live, you know, and then it ends and that's it. <laughs> so whatever you do in between, uh, you know, don't put anybody up higher than you or don't put anybody yeah. down because, you know, we're all the same. So Yeah, I was thinking the same phrase, putting people on a pedestal. You just, you see celebrities that, uh, you know, premieres and, you know, parties and stuff like that on, on TV and yeah. you just you just think, most people think that you couldn't be like that as well. It's like, the way I see it, people who are famous usually are just people who are passionate about a subject and work really hard at it and, oh, yeah. you know, that's yeah, all to it really. It's not, it's not like they were born talented or they're born special or whatever they they've learned over years of skill like anyone else oh yeah yeah and you know the fame and the celebrity is kind of something that goes along it just comes along with it depending on you know kind of what level you get to but um mm. yeah i know you know tv and film you know it's a, it's this weird phenomenon how just because your face shows up you know on a tv or or a, a movie theater screen uh you're, you're here, you know, it's really weird, it's funny because I went to see the movie again last night, My, it was playing at this theater in Pennsylvania where we shot, it's the oldest movie theater in the United States, oldest working movie theater, um, and my uncle wanted to see it, so my uncle drove up and I drove about an hour out to see it, and it was the last night it was screening, and after the movie, you know, we were talking outside and we are going to get coffee, and a couple of people that were there, 
uh, were walking out would recognize me. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not used to that, that type of thing. I'm not anybody in the film industry, you know, by that, you know, by any extent. And, and these people were, you know, these women came up to me, oh my God, screaming, you know, it took me so off guard. And, you know, I mean, probably, you know, 10 people came, 10 people came up to me. Wow, you were really good, blah, blah, blah. And, and then, he, he looked at this, this person and, oh, that was Joshua from the film and these girls came at me screaming and it was, you know, it was just, it was really weird. I know you hear people say it like they don't understand why people want to take a picture with them like these women did with me, you know, and it's, it's a, it's a weird phenomenon. Like just because my face was there, I'm some sort of special person and, you know, I, it's, it's very weird how, how we kind of automatically push a person here and we give them second chances. They might not be good people, but well, you know, they're in the movies or they're in the music industry or they're on TV. So, yeah, you know, they get a pass and it's, it's weird how we do that. And I, I don't understand it. And it's not why I do what I do by any means, but, um, I guess it comes along with the territory if you get, you know, like I said, you get to a certain, yeah. a certain level. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, just going to finish things up. What, sure. um, what advice would you give people watching this? You know, if you, if you're watching this and you feel quite shy and you, you know, you have a dream and you want to, you want to be something, but you think, oh, I can't do that because I'm too shy. What would you, what would you say to those people? I, I think with anything is you have to take the first step. You know, I remember a while back, I was, you know, five years ago, I was so out of shape. And you know, you, you talk, you, you try to talk yourself up in your head, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. I got to start working out again, and and it's really, you know, after that first workout, all of a sudden it's over, and it's okay. I feel good. Yeah. Um, I can do this, and then you get into like a pattern, and and you know, and I fall into the same thing now, where you know I'm kind of revamping my photography business as well, and I, I keep talking. Well, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this, and that first, you know, it, that first step is crucial. And, you know, you need to just get off your ass and do. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, it's very cliche. Just do it. You know, when I spoke to Emma um, on the phone, like I said, we were childhood friends. Uh, Emma Bell, for those of you who don't know, she's an actress. Look her up. She's yeah. wonderful and she's going to be big. Um, you know, I called her up and I said, you know, how do I get into this industry and this and that and I didn't, I didn't really know how to get into it and she said well that's your problem she goes you didn't do anything and she said just keep doing she goes work for free work in small production and do theater plays with that you're you know uh working in front of two people it doesn't matter you're getting better and you don't realize the progress you're making um you know during the journey but you're going to look back and say wow you know look at all the steps i i completed and look how far i've come um and you'll get there. You know, you, you never know how far, you know, how close you are to kind of succeeding. You know what I mean? You could be right there and you, and, and you're never going to know it. And this isn't something where you're going to get instant results. You know, how, you know, people are today. People want automatic, um, results and they want to succeed now, today, right now. I want to, I want to, I want to become an actor on Monday and I want to be famous on Tuesday. And that's not how it works. Um, and that goes with anything, you know, it's not, you're not gonna succeed like that overnight. And I think once you realize that, and once you realize it's, it's, it's a process and the process begins with taking that first step and just kind of, you know, putting your fears aside. And, and I think too, I think before even that, you know, what's the worst thing that can, ha that can happen? You know, when I go to an audition and I get nervous, like I went to this audition for the film that I actually got, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that, that can happen is they can say no. That's it. And I'm still going to go home. I'm still going to be married. I'm still going to have my, my son. I'm still going to be happy. And it's, you know, I'm not going to get there and say, and they're not going to tell me, no, you suck. You have cancer. You're going to die tomorrow. You know what I mean? I mean, the worst that can happen is they can say no, and that's it, and that's okay. And once you know, you know, what the worst is, you know, starting a business, what's the worst that can happen when you start a business? The business fails. So what? So you learn, and you go back, and where are your mistakes, and you try again. Yeah. You know, and I think once you can see rock bottom, and you know what the absolute worst case scenario is, you know, you kind of give yourself permission to, 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 to go do it, to go try. 
you know, put yourself out there because, you know, the way I look at it is I don't want to be 90 and look back and say, wow, I, I really, I dropped the ball. I mean, that, that's, that's my biggest fear more than anything. My biggest fear is not getting, going into an addition or failing in my business or whatever. It's being old and, and, and having regrets that I didn't try. I mean, I, I think I fear that probably more than, than anything else in life, yeah. really. I really do. I think that's important. Yeah, that's, that's great advice, Jeff. Um, yeah. yeah, so many people, you know, have a fear of failure that they don't even try. And I can relate to that. Um, Absolutely. So you're just saying take, take the small steps and then you learn Absolutely. Give, building confidence and give yourself, you know, you should have huge goals, but I think too, and I get very overwhelmed sometimes. I start thinking about all my goals and everything that I want to do, and I kind of just get like ah, mm. and and then I don't want to do anything, and I, and I push it all away, and, and then I walk away from it, and that's the worst thing that can happen, I think, because now you just turn yourself off, and you're moving in the opposite direction. You're, yeah. you're taking steps back. I think if you just say, you know. Narrow it down. What you want to do? Focus on individual small tasks and just chip away, chip away, chip away. And, and like I said, just take steps every day. You're not gonna, you know, when I got into photography and I started using Photoshop several years back, I wanted to sit down and use Photoshop and know everything that night. Yeah. And that's not the way it works. <laughs> you know, you you just it's little by little, and you will learn, and you will learn, and you will learn, and and that's kind of I've allowed myself to just. Know that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it overnight. I'm, and anything that I do, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna allow myself to just just keep learning, keep taking steps, keep moving forward. And you're gonna look back one day and say, "Wow, you know, look where I started, look where I am, and and look where I'm gonna go after that." So yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Look, looking at that through like a, a social anxiety shyness, you know, trying to get more confident. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, from my own experience, I wanted someone to take away the the shyness for me and make me confident, like give me a magic pill or, or do something to me so I'll change. I think it's when you take responsibility, well, speaking from myself, I took responsibility for the way I was feeling and I, I said to myself, I need to do something about this, not, you know, Absolutely. rely on, you know, anyone else to do it for me. And yeah. Again, I was taking the small steps to... And, and like you said, once you get in front... Of, once you have that feeling, like you said, when, when you're in front of people or I'm in front of a camera or I'm, or I'm just creating and being, you know, uh, taking, you know, photographs, which I, you know, like I said, that's my business and I love to do. Once you have that feeling and you continue to have that feeling, that will be the new normal for you. Yeah. And this feeling of, you know, that introverted, shy self, that will be you know, the outlier, that will be, you know, what you, what you almost kind of fear, but, you know, your euphoric self and that feeling of, of, you know, um, of, of doing well, that'll be the new norm. And, and it's kind of just that getting trans, that, that transition of, of pushing the fear down out here and pushing that shyness away and, and putting yourself up here. And like you said, it's, it's very quick because it's weird. It'll take so long to get there, but it only takes an instant to come back. And I think that's the tricky part is just, you know, in your head, just keep moving forward. Don't overwhelm yourself and, um, you know, small steps and, you know, baby yeah. steps. <laughs> so, Yeah, I like the but, thing you said about the new norm because, you know, I've done all these things over the past 10 years. And, you know, I still, like I said, I still get awkward and shy in different kind of situations. But I'm at a kind of level, you know, I can do this video interview now. Ten yeah. years ago, I wouldn't even want to look at the camera or anything. I'd just, I just—that's what I mean. I mean, look how far you look how far you've come. You know what I mean? You get to look back and, and reflect and say, "Wow, you know, look where I was five, ten years ago. Mm. Look where I am now." You know, and and that's cool. And those are special moments when you can look back and say, "You know, wow, I didn't think I could do it. I, I gave myself goals. I took steps, and now yeah. look where I am. I'm not where I want to be. Uh, you know, always be happy, never be satisfied, but you know." I made huge leaps and bounds. And I think that's so important. You know, you're never going to know anything in life. You're not going to know every single thing. And nobody is, you know, but I, you know, just, just keep learning. That's yeah. all. As long, as long as you're learning and getting better, you 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 know, you're not getting worse and <laughs> you're not reverting back. So it's a constant struggle. Like with, like with anything, um, I think, and, um, you know, such is life, I guess. So, yeah. 
yeah so that's about it so um yeah to anyone watching this um it's all about taking the small steps and you know you'll surprise yourself you take even you keep taking these tiny steps and then then you look back and think i've come so far but you don't it's not like a massive um feeling of a breakthrough it's just like you've gradually get, gained a tiny bit of confidence every day so yeah i just hope anyone who's watching this realize if you want to be a singer or an actor or anything just you know just keep going and we both believe in you because we we've, we've been in one place and we've got to another place so um thanks for your time today jeff i really appreciate it mate and oh, thank you for having me i appreciate it as well yeah okay thank you